Given a bipartite graph with partite sets x and y, we can easily find a matching that saturates x. Such a matching solves problems like assigning jobs to employees who can do the job, matching couples willing to marry each other, or selecting representatives from a collection of constituencies. But not all matchings are equal. Some workers may be better at certain jobs, some couples may be more compatible than others, and some representatives may be more available for meetings. So how do we solve this problem? So let's introduce the rating matrix. Suppose we have n employees and n tasks to be performed. We could represent the proficiencies using a rating matrix R, where employee I performs task J with proficiency RIJ, with a higher value representing a greater proficiency. Or we can let RIJ represent the compatibility of individual I with individual J, or the preference of person I for location J, or any other quantifiable relationship between I and J. If individual I is assigned task TI, our goal is to maximize the sum of the proficiencies. For example, suppose the rating matrix at a company with four employees and four tasks is, what happens if each person is assigned the task they are most efficient at? Or if each task is assigned to the person most capable of performing it? And what does this analysis suggest? So remember that in the rating matrix, the IJ entry is how well the Ith employee performs the Jth task. So the first row represents a proficiency of the first worker at the four tasks. The second row represents the proficiency of the second worker at the four tasks, and so on. So if each person is assigned the job they are most proficient at, then person 1 is assigned job 3 or 4 with proficiency 9. Person 2 is assigned job 4 with proficiency 8. Person 3 is also assigned job 4 with proficiency 9. And person 4 is assigned job 4 with proficiency 6. And the thing to notice is that we are just selecting the row maxima. And what this also means is that job 4 is done by at least 3 people, while jobs 1 and 2 are done by nobody. Meanwhile, if every job is done by the most competent person, job 1, that's this first column, will be done by person 1 with proficiency 8. Job 2 will be done by person 1 with proficiency 7. Job 3 is done by person 1 with proficiency 9, and job 4 is done by person 1 or 3 with proficiency 9. And these are the column maxima. So if every job is done by the person who is best at it, persons 1 and 3 do all the work. Based on this analysis, the company should hire more people and engage in training workers in new jobs. So the IJ entry of a matrix represents the relationship between the Ith employee and the Jth task. So the rating matrix can be presented as a bipartite graph with partite sets X and Y, where X is the set of employees, Y is the set of tasks, and an edge joins vertices I and J with weight R, I, J. We want to find a matching whose edges saturate all vertices in X and Y. Moreover, we want the sum of the edge weights to be as great as possible. To do so, we'll use an approach described in 1955 by Harold Kuhn. 
Kuhn himself called it the Hungarian algorithm because it was inherent in the work of Hungarian mathematicians Dennis Koenig and Jena Egeveri. Although Carl Gustav Jacob Jacobi described a version of the algorithm about a hundred years before Kuhn, and what's called the Hungarian algorithm is actually based on a modification given by James Monquist in 1957. This confusion of what the algorithm should be named shouldn't be too surprising in a field of mathematics where there's no agreement on the basic terms. Now, while we'll give the algorithm, remember, a computer can implement an algorithm faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human. So learning the algorithm isn't important. If that's all you do, you will be replaced by a machine. So to be replaceable by a machine, skip to the next video. Creating an algorithm is what's important. You can't be taught how to be creative, but you can use the creative processes of others as a model for how you might develop your own creative process. So let's see how we could have invented Kuhn's algorithm. It often helps to look at a problem from different angles. In this case, we're weighting the edges. But imagine a toll road. You can view the tolls as the cost of using a certain road segment, but since the tolls are collected at specific points, you can also view the tolls as the cost of passing through certain points. This suggests we might be able to take an edge-weighted graph and find vertex weights where the weight of an edge can be found by adding the weights of the incident vertices. Unfortunately, this is generally impossible. In practice, we'll have more constraints, the edge weights, than variables, the vertex weights, so we can't do this. While we can't find vertex weights that give us the edge weights, we could find a weighted cover. A set of vertex weights so that if vertices i and j have weights xi, yj, and the edge has weight wij, the weight of the edge is less than or equal to the sum of the vertex weight for all edges. The cost of the cover is the sum of all the vertex weights. For example, for the graph shown, let's find a weighted cover and then determine the cost. So, notice the greatest edge weight anywhere is 9. So, if all vertices are assigned weight 9, then the sum of the vertices incident on any edge will be greater than 9. And the cost will be the sum of the vertex weights. And remember, don't stop at one solution. Since this is a bipartite graph, we could do better. We could assign the lower vertices cost zero and still have every edge weight less than the sum of the incident vertices. In fact, since no edge starting at B has weight greater than eight, we can reduce that vertex to weight 8, and likewise D can have its weight reduced to 6. Note that the edges in a matching have weight at most equal to the sum of the vertex weights. So the sum of the edges in any matching will be at most equal to the cost of the cover. Consequently, the least cost cover gives us an upper bound on the maximum possible edge sum. 